good afternoon uh, to all and first and foremost a very hearty welcome to kerala express computers have been organizing this technology sabha for quite a while because i keep getting calls to participate in this technology sabha for uh, as one of the panelists as one of the uh, speakers Uh, for the last uh, uh, and i keep consistent uh, getting consistent calls very insistive calls on this for almost the last two years but so far i have not been able to make it uh, to any of these events but finally the technology sabha decided to come to uh, kerala and uh, i'm finally able to attend uh, a session so uh, as a person uh, uh, even though i am a career bureaucrat i started my official journey and uh, way back in 96 when the information technology department was established in kerala for the first time i was the first employee of the it department here so from 96 to 2019 for this many years i have been in and out of it Uh, we have been having some certain periods uh, certain tenure periods in it but uh, uh, my bleeding in the it sector had enabled me to look at options of introducing technology introducing governing principles in whatever sectors i have worked in it has been quite an interesting journey and the advantage in this process what i also realized was that i have been a spectator or a passive participant in a massive transformation process so today morning i was just trying to recall what was what were the things that we talked about in 96 97 when we talked about e governance and today the type of things which we are talking about there is a sea change there is a huge difference in the mid 90s when we talked about e governance generally the principle was the focus was on g to c government to consumer services and to some extent g to g and that time ease of doing business was not talked about so g to b was not very much talked about the whole philosophy then was that the processes in government are very complicated the procedures are archaic there is a need to change all these things and it was felt that if we change these procedures or processes there is a tendency of the government to go back to its original mode of the old good old elaborate procedures and processes to avoid that you do your process reform and then seal it with an it wrap so that it doesn't revert this was the idea when uh, e governance was mooted in way back in the uh, mid 90s so we had uh, work studies we had process flows uh, mapped we tried to identify surplus uh, uh, layers we try to eliminate them we try to simplify the processes and then create an it solution which would uh, ensure that it stays that way to some extent it worked to some extent the system managed to overcome the it layer and reemerge in and expose its uh, get into its earlier mode but by and large the customer uh, g2c services have got enabled and the spectacular work done by the government agencies particularly the cdac the nic uh, the, the government providers as well as the private uh, solution providers have been needs to be acknowledged right now we have what we call as the e district portal the my go uh, type of thing where almost every service in in kerala we offer around 92 services online 
so practically uh, online availability of services have become uh, a fact in kerala when we tried to do this we had some issues with reforming the governance but we also felt that the major issue was uh, just having a service online doesn't make sense you need to have the customer also the confidence to use those services online so customer education was important access was important language was important the, the making the service available the vernacular interface was important the user friendliness was important so initially we started off with what we call as uh, uh, daksha centers where the whole objective was to have a computer center within 2 uh, km radius of your place of residence now this was borrowed from the kerala model where kerala as you would know had fairly high human development indices in health education etc and when we look back at why these indices are high we found that the major reason was that service delivery of all these uh, all these care giving institutions were penetrating deep to the grassroots level we have around 22000 pda shops around 30000 anganwadis 12000 schools around 16 uh, 1600 hospitals so every panchayat every uh, you have a hospital for every panchayat you have a, a school for every three wards type of thing so which practically meant that a person who wanted to access any of these services whether it is nutrition whether it is food whether it is health whether it is uh, uh, education it was all available at his doorstep so we tried to do a similar thing in making it service available at the doorstep this was the pre mobile era that is how we did this project called akshaya and along with that we also try to ensure that at least one person in every family is comfortable in using computers so the digital literacy also was a major component of them this akshaya project got subsequently uh, packaged and uh, structured into the common service center of government of india and the csc actually uh, uh, to groups here in kerala so while on one side we had governance reforms it enabling of such governance processes focus on g2c we also had a major focus in the state as well as in the country to ensure that touch points where these services are available are near the people and the people do not have do not get intimidated in approaching these touch points so by and large this framework was well set then came this massive uh, two massive changes one was the introduction of it as a subject in schools computers being taught in schools which actually ensured that the next generation coming out of our education system are well fairly comfortable with uh, use of technology particularly it still it would have taken us a lot more time to have got into uh, a, a, a digitally enabled ecosystem then we had this massive telecom revolution with technology revolution which happened in the mobile space india today is the largest geography which gets into internet through mobile rather than through the computer rest of the world they have got introduced to internet through the computer india as a geography gets introduced to internet through the mobile phones rather than to the computer and then this whole process of whatever applications we had whatever g2c services which we had we had we we had to move on to this mobile enabling them so it's a massive program of uh, the government of india on the mobile governance program which also many states have done so this is a journey which we have traveled so far in the meantime new concerns have started coming up primarily most of these g2c applications were developed over a 10 to 15 year period of time so they come with various technologies 
various technology versions, the antiquity is uh, different, bringing them all to a common platform so that they're interoperable, they talk to each other, they interact with each other, that's a major work which is just being taken up under the India Enterprise Architecture Framework. A few states have started it, I think, but still we are yet to see greater momentum there. In the meantime, the national government also put substantial emphasis on data centers, the wide area networks, the swangs, so these are also there uh, largely. Then we also had the Aadhaar and the UIDA initiative, which gave a very different dimension to this whole process. Today, the challenges which we face are of a second generation challenges, which talk about security, privacy, and things like that. Today we are no longer talking about whether a service is available or not, or not, whether that service is available in a secure manner, whether a person who provides information to get that services, to what extent is his privacy protected. Today we are talking about a cashless economy. The transactions which you do with your bank, it's it's not perhaps an e-government, it doesn't perhaps fall in the e-governance parlance, but how secure is it? How safe it is? How reliable is it? So the problems keep changing. So I was just listening to the introductory remarks being made. In 25 years of Express Computers, if you go through the issues which you have brought out, you will clearly see this pattern of problems, pattern of concerns, pattern of issues changing in the last 25 years. As on today, it is not about G2C, so what G2C service is what we need to provide. That is not the question. The question is primarily whether we can provide it more effectively on the mobile in a secure and uh, uh, reliable uh, manner, ensuring the dignity and privacy of the individual. That is the debate right now. That is the challenge right now. It is very important for officers working in government and work officers working in uh, the sector, uh, including the technology providers, to understand this uh, uh, shifting paradigms. Now, of late, we also have, other than the government to citizen services, we have also a large number of value-added services which are coming up. That is an area which is being dominated by the mobile apps and startup companies which are offering sleek, smart, dependable solutions. Engaging with this framework, engaging with this uh, new set of providers, the new set of technology agile providers is another major challenge or another major requirement which governments need to rediscover or equip themselves with. I do hope a technology safari like this looks at the past, understands the journey that we have made so far, looks around, finds the gaps and tries to see what is the ideal approach where we can meet them, looks into the future Right now, every governance discussion gets tempered with words like big data, artificial intelligence, stuff like that. Do we really require that? To what extent do we require that? How do we meaningfully use them? What is the capacity levels within the government? What is the capacity levels within service providers? These are all issues which we need to discuss and debate. We also need to look globally and find out what are the best practices available which can be adapted, customized, and put to use effectively. There is no point in relearning the wheel or reinventing the wheel every now and then. So this entire framework, this entire, I would consider these type of uh, gatherings, these type of sessions to be sessions because all of you are working in the, at the cutting edge level 
at delivery levels so every day you are too busy fighting the fire you have too busy so you're too busy solving the numerous problems which are brought to your desk gatherings like this enable us to step back or not two steps back take or not two steps back look at this whole scenario introspect in in a slightly relaxed uh, framework adapt and listen to new ideas and see how we can collectively make uh, this whole journey more purposeful more meaningful and more effective i do hope technology sabha kochi will be able to achieve this objective substantially i was just looking at the schedule there is a very interesting uh, uh, set of speakers interesting set of sessions from deep technology providers to the, the emerging technology providers like artificial intelligence and uh, uh, big data type of thing to concerns of cyber security and uh, data security the entire range is getting covered while listening to these uh, discussions if we can contextualize what had happened in our own domains in the last 20 25 years and see how these applications become relevant in our day to day context and then individually work out a way forward on how to drive the organization how to ensure that delivery happens in a more effective manner i think the purpose would be well served i do hope technology sabha kuchi would be able to achieve this i wish you all the best i do hope you have very productive two days of interactions thank you thank you very much shri shri